ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತ್ರಿಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಮದಮಾನೈರಂತಿ ಮೋಪಾಯನಿಷ್ಠೈರಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರಬ್ಧ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲ ಜನ ಸುಹೃದ್ಭಿರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ವರವರ ಮುನಿಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯೋಗ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇತ್ತೈ ವೇದಂಗಣ ಋಷಿಗಣ ಆಳ್ವಾರ್ಹಣ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರ್ಹಣ ವಿರುಂಬಿನಾರ್ಹ ಟೂ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಯುನೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಕ್ಷರ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ a mantra or theory or whatever if it has to be accepted by masses it has to be accepted by the senior persons belonging to that field so <clears throat> unless it is authenticated by the senior most persons belonging to that field it will not be accepted by the people at large therefore here pidleloka acharya this one minute it is number 13 which you had uh, started to uh, discuss in the earlier class ಇತ್ತೈ ವೇದಂಗಣ ಋಷಿಗಣ ಆಳ್ವಾರ್ಹಣ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರ್ಹಣ ವಿರಂಬಿನ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೂ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಆರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ಲಿ it should not be derided by others in the sense <clears throat> it has to be positively accepted by them and not be derided these are the two important aspects so how the ashtakshara mahamantra is acceptable to one and all is the question which is answered here by pidladoka acharya who says ಇತ್ತೈ ವೇದಂಗಣ ಋಷಿಗಳು ಆಳ್ವಾರ್ಹಣ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರ್ಹಣ ವಿರುಂಬಿನ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಸೇಜಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿ ಸೇಜಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿ ಆಳ್ವಾರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ ಹ
So all four of these have in unison accepted and acknowledged and also eloquently mentioned about the greatness of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. So we have seen the earlier in the earlier class how the Vedas have very respectfully spoken about this Ashtakshara Mahamantra and also the Rishis in the Puranas, which we will just go through now. And then how the Alvars and Acharyas have also mentioned about this. <clears throat> so, so, in the earlier sutras or tunikas, Bhidlaloka Acharya showed that the Vasudeva Dwarashakshani Mantra and the Vishnu Shadakshani Mantra have been in a way appropriated by the Advaitins and Vaitins. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be taken with a pinch of salt because if you say tomorrow, if somebody says, we, will, we are also practicing the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, that doesn't mean that we should give it up. That is why I, I keep mentioning that it should be taken with a pinch of salt in the sense to explain the greatness of this mantra. Many a times some aspects are <coughs> mentioned wherein other mantras are shown to be little of a little bit less lesser value. So Ashishta Parigraha accepts exists for the other two mantras, whereas Shishta Parigraha accepts exists for this mantra. <coughs> so where is it? Aradhanade Vishnu Gayatri Ne Vyapaka Mantrati Mantra Trayati Trayatayum Shalu Bala Shalu Hiravala Vil Pratamati Nara and Shabdati Pradhani and Apatiparityanum. So we have seen the instances where the Vedas have very explicitly mentioned about the greatness of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. Then you have the Rishis who have specifically mentioned in the um, Puranas, Itihasas, etc., which you are going to study now. Yatha Sarveshu Deveshu Masti Narayana Paraha Tatha Sarveshu Mantreshu Masti Chashtakshara Paraha and uh, if you happen to have the what we know as the Pramanatirita in Sanskrit, which means all the references to the quotations that have been quoted in the course of the text have been listed out in the alphabetical order and also their sources have been given. So here I, I don't find the, in the book that I am using. I don't find the source uh, sources of many of the quotations. So you can try and find out from the other books that you have. So this particular passage says, Yatha sarve shu deve shu nasti narayana paraha Tatha sarve shu mantre shu nasti chashta akshara paraha These are the sayings of great sages. So it was mentioned Rishi Halam, Vedangalam, Rishi Halam, Malvar Halam, Acharya. So how the Vedas have commended the greatness of Ashtakshara Mahamantra that we have seen earlier. Now we are actually studying the commendation and also recommendation of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra by the sages. So one particular shloka is as follows. Yatha, just as there is no God who is superior to Lord Narayana, similarly there is no mantra which is superior to the Ashtakshara. This is one shloka. Another shloka is Bhutor Dhabahu Adhyatra Satyapur Vambravimi Vaha He Putra Shishya Shrinuta 
मंत्रो राष्ट्राक्षरापर न मंत्रोष्टाक्षरापर in a particular sage tells as follows probably it is sage vyasa who is telling this bhuta urdhva bahu adya atra satya purvam bravimi vah in the upanishads we find that when a very important statement has to be mentioned it begins with tade tat satyam which means what is going to be told hereafter is the truth then we may have a question as to why is it mentioning that what i am going to mention hereafter is the truth in some places does that mean that there are some untruths or falsehoods also in the upanishads it's not like that though the entire upanishad talks about the truth only certain passages deserve more respect and we have to take that into account more than the other passages so here also the sage says satya purvam bravimi vah now i am going to raise my hand and tell all of you he he actually addresses his sons and also his disciples he putra shishya shrinuta o sons o disciples listen to me now having raised my hand i am going to tell something that is the truth that means it is the truth of truths it can never be a false so he says adya atra satya purvam bravimi vah satya purvam means once again reiterating that i am talking about the truth only and nothing else or talking about the truth i am mentioning this to you please listen to me what is it namantro ashtaksara paraha there is no mantra that is beyond the ashtaksara or greater than the ashtaksara or has greater value than the ashtaksara so this is one shloka by rishi another pramana is as follows सर्वेदातसारा संसारावतारक गतिरष्टाक्षरोण अपुनर्भवकांक्षिणा सो दीनिंग इज एस फॉलोस दि अष्टाक्षर महामंत्र इज दि सर्वेदातसारा इट इज दि एसेन्स ऑफ ऑल दि वेदात so we can take the vedanta which means vedana manta antimo bhaga vedanta which refers to the upanishads so the purport of the vedas are explained in the upanishads and the purport of the upanishads of all the upanishads put together is the ashtaksara mahamantra so sarva vedanta sarartha and samsara arnava taraka it is capable of delivering us from this vicious samsara or material world and gati rashtaksharo nrenam apunarbhava kanchinam punarbhava means repeated birth so we all know an atman a jeevatma he undergoes bondage which means again and again he is born and dies born he is born he dies once again he is born so jatasya dhruva mrityu dhruvam janma mrtasya cha etc is explained in the gita but for those who do not want to be born again apunarbhava kanchana punarbhava means being born again in this world so apunarbhava means those who do not apunarbhava means not being born that means liberation apunar bhava kanshina those who want to attain liberation their only sum and substance is the ashtaksara mahamantra gatihi ashtaksharo nrinam apunar bhava kanshina 
So this is very, very beautiful shloka about the Ashtakri Mahamantra. Then you have one more very famous shloka. Artha Vishanna Shithidascha Bhitaha Kore Shutavyadhi Shuvartamanaha Sankirtya Narayana Shabda Matram Vimukta Dukkaha Sukhino Bhavanti So Artha, those who have are undergoing great misery. Vishannaha, those who are very sad. Shithilaha, those who have been overcome by, overwhelmed by the circumstances. Bhitaha, those who are afraid of anything. It might be afraid of death. It might be afraid of impending uh, problems, impending uh, different types of situations, etc. And Ghore Shutavyadhishu Artamana. And those who are experiencing very severe fatal diseases. All those, they can Sankirtya Narayana Shabda Matram. Just by mentioning or pronouncing the word Narayana, they Vimukta Dukkaha, they will be rid of their, they will be rid of their miseries and Sukhino Bhavanti. So they will attain happiness. But in this context, I would like to mention a small anecdote of mentioned by my Acharya. It's a very significant incident. But this will not be generally told by the regular lecturers or regular people who give the regular scholars who give the discourse, give discourses due to various reasons which are not very relevant now. So once my Acharya was experiencing a great severe headache. So he was experiencing great pain because according to Ayurveda, and also our own experience. Pain in other parts of the body is relatively endurable, whereas pain in the head is generally very much unendurable. We fail very, very bad. <coughs> it's very difficult to endure the headache. Then suddenly my Acharya remembered the shloka, Arthaha, Vishanaha, Shitila, Ashta, Bhitaha, Gore, Ashta, Sankirti Narayana Shabda Matu Mukta Dukha Sukhino Bhavanti. Oh, then it is says, even if you are experiencing a huge, very fatal disease or very serious disease, if you are sad, if you are having any misery, just by mentioning the word Narayana, you will actually be rid of those diseases and attain happiness. Then immediately he said, Narayana, 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 but the headache did not go immediately. Then he started thinking, is it that what they have mentioned in the shloka is an exaggeration? Or is it false? Because I told Narayana, I told the word Narayana, I pronounced the word Narayana, but I have not, the pain has not gone. Probably after I take a pop in an aspirin or some t <laughs> allopathic tablet, after half an hour or 45 minutes, the pain might go. Then he started thinking and he remembered the words of his own Acharya, who was a realized person, that Sankirti Narayana, when we say the word Narayana, what should happen to us? So uh, suppose I say, I saw a bird. Then the person who is listening to it, he immediately understands it and he says yes. For example, if I say I saw a crow, suppose Keshav Das, he tells me, then I will say, oh yes, okay, where or something like that. I will understand, I'll say yes. So when he says I saw a crow, I understand it and I immediately when I listen to the word crow, I, the image of a black 
medium sized bird comes to my mind immediately or if i if he says i say i saw a sparrow or i saw a parrot as soon as i listen to the word sparrow the image or a, the picture of a small bird comes to my mind and if he says a parrot then immediately the picture of a medium sized bird having a uh, green color the really parrots are green but you have different types of course so uh, assuming that it's a green parrot but what happens when you say the word narayana so now even as i am telling now narayana it is not having any specific any specific image is not coming to my mind or we may remember the archa form for example the narayana our setting deity of melkor of course archa avatara is really one of the greatest forms of the god but we have not realized the paramatma tatva in the archa avatara though we have respect though we have a uh, veneration towards the archa form still we don't feel as i mentioned <clears throat> some time back we go to that, uh, another incident i mentioned by my acharya so a person goes to a temple <clears throat> and he says oh i have the lord has given me wonderful darshan beautiful exquisite all the exquisite exquisite he is adorned with ex- exquisite ornaments all the shankha chakra etc oh very beautiful very beautiful and after a half an hour or 45 minutes after we have come from the temple come back from the temple if somebody asks half hand have you seen god then what do we say an honest person will say no oh, i have not seen then no no you have seen no no i have not seen i can tell you i have not seen then what did you see in the temple you said you had wonderful darshan in the temple you said exquisite uh, darshan and the exquisite ornaments oh that card is it okay okay yeah that card i have seen of course yes that means <laughs> we are not ourselves convinced that he is the supreme lord because we have not had the realization of the supremacy of that lord so ultimately the difference between the alvars and purvacharyas who had the uh, realization because even in the case of dhanurdas i want to mention this so we all know in the story of dhanurdas that is ramanuja acharya the episode of dhanurdas so he was known as pillevaranga villi dasar in tamil he is translated as villi dasa is dhanurdas in sanskrit so what he used to do his wives his wife's eyes were so beautiful that he always used to see the continuously see the and enjoy the beauty of it, the eyes of his wife and even when he used to come and move around in shrirangam in the by on the banks of kaveri as well as in the streets of shrirangam he used to hold a an umbrella so that the sun's rays should not touch her because she is so delicate because her eyes are so beautiful so when this continuously happened people started censuring him. and ultimately this happened in the presence of ramanuja acharya also once then immediately ramanuja acharya asked him to asked his disciple to bring him to his presence and then said what is this what are you doing why are you always holding an umbrella to your wife then <clears throat> it seems dhanurdas has said i am enamored of the beauty of her eyes so i cannot do anything but worship her the beauty of her eyes and if we worship some somebody or something we automatically give our entire being or self to that and i are always involved in looking at it enjoying its beauty etc that's why i am doing then immediately ramanuja acharya told suppose i show you the eyes 
that are better than this, what will you do? Much, much more <coughs> beautiful than the wife of your eyes, the eyes of your wife's son. And he said, then I will worship that by all means. Why not? So immediately the story goes that <coughs> Ramananda Acharya took him to the near the sanctum sanctorum of Sri Ramananda, and he made him worship Lord Nanganatha and see the eyes of the Lord. How beautiful it is! So the story goes that immediately the Nurdasa was became enamored of the eyes of the Lord Nanganatha, and he stopped looking at the eyes of his wife with the mentality that he had earlier. And he became an inseparable devotee of Rabandha. Then my Acharya asked, so we have had the Lord, Darshan of the Lord several times. Do we feel like that? Why? The answer is immediately Dhanurdasa had the internal Darshan of the Divine eyes of the Supreme Lord, which was triggered by the darshan of the Archa Murti that existed in Sri Lanka. So, <clears throat> we, our samskaras are so much less that we are unable to realize this. <clears throat> Even Tirupanandwar said, Yen Namudinai Kanda Kangal Matkundinai Kanda. So, immediately there, the Darshan or the vision of the external vision of the Archa Murti used to take them internally where they would have the vision because it is said, Namam Sachakshu Abhivikshate. The external I cannot cognize the Supreme Lord. Even the Aldwar say, Nenjanum Ukkannel Kanu Mudaruti. In several places, he said, it has been mentioned. Yogi, yogi Hridhyanagam. They can, he can be realized by in the heart by the yogins, by the rishis, by the acharyas, salvas, etc. So here also, when the word Narayana is mentioned, immediately if we have the vision of the Supreme Lord Narayana, or if we can have remember the vision that we have had earlier. Then definitely Artaha, Vishinaha, Shitlaha, Bhita, Goreshta, Vyarshu, Arthamanaha, Sankirtana. They will give up their misery, they will give up their sadness, they will give up their uh, uh, fatal diseases, and all these things will happen. So we have to remember that the Narayana Shabda that we are going to pronounce is not an end in itself because we have to continuously pronounce, 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 and someday, by the grace of the Lord, immediately, when the period time occurs, then we will have the vision of the Supreme Lord. Then all these things will definitely occur. But that may not be, that may not happen immediately, it may take a long, longer time. But this is what my Acharya mentioned to me when this shloka used to be explained by him. But this will generally be not be explained by the other discourse givers of Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya for obvious reasons. Of course, we respect all of them. But the, this is the inner information that my Acharya gave me and we have to all appreciate it. That's what I think. Then, one more very beautiful pramana. Narayaneti shabdosti Vagasti Vatavashavartini Tathapi Narake Gore Patanti Tikimad Bhutam. Very beautiful shloka which says the world called Narayana exists and we are endowed with the speech box, which I would like to put it put it as the speech box, which is within our control. So, we are able to, we have total control over our speech and also the word Narayana exists. Even then, Tathapi Narake Gore Patanti Tikimad Bhutam, even then, 
people actually fall in the severe places of hell they go to the severe uh, severely miserable planets of the hell what is this how is it, how is it possible which means even though the word narayana which can be pronounced is in our own hands it's in well under our control we don't do it due to which people are all people who don't do it actually go to hell that means the narayana shabda is so powerful that it can deliver a person from the samsara and land him in moksha or liberation one more very beautiful statement kin tatra bahu bhir mantraihi kin tatra bahu bhir vrataihi namo narayanaye ti mantra sarvartha sadhaka what is the use of so many mantras what is the use of so many vratas there are hundreds of thousands of mantras hundreds of vratas are there why are people enamored of these things when the mantra namo narayana ya om namo narayana ya is as we chant it it can bestow everything that is required by human being when when it is so why do people go after other mantras go after the vratas or vows etc so you can give up everything else and rest on or focus on the narayana nama and also the ashtakira maha mantra only that is sufficient for a person to get everything that is required here and hereafter that is what the shloka says ityadi halale वेदार्थ उपब्रह्मणंगणाइरिक्तिरस्वप्रबंधंगणिलेपलविणंगणिलंइदैश्लाघित्तिकुंडाडहयाने so the itihasas and puranas they are to be used as known as upabrahmana of the vedas so what do what does the ved, uh, word upabrahmana mean upabrahmana means tadartha vishadikaranam explaining in detail the meaning of those words of the of those vedic passages so all the shlokas of the rishis that we have just read and explained ityadi halale vedartha upabrahmanangalai rikira svaprabandhangaline so these are authored by the sages like the ramayana mahabharata and all the puranas upapuranas etc and also the smriti works like manusmriti etc which anikvevokali or categorically state the supremacy of lord narayana vedartha vishadikarana phala vidangalilum ittai shlagitt kondaduhayane shlagitt kondu solluhayane they have in no uncertain terms and explicitly mentioned about the greatness of the ashtakshara maha mantra and what are the sages doing that vedartha vishadikarana pravrittaran vyasaadi paramarshihanam virambinarhan so vyasa valmiki and so many other people because even valmiki says sahapatnya vishalaksha narayana upagamati very beautiful even drama when he was about to take the vow of being coronated the next day on the previous day he was asked to perform the vows which involve the worship of lord narayana so though rama himself is the incarnation of narayana from the point of view of 
is being a, a human being as per the conditions put put forth by ravana where he would not be killed by any person other than a human being so rama says atmanam manusham manye ramam dasharathatmajam when when brahma comes and propitiates him as sita lakshmi bhavan vishnu who you are the incarnation of lord vishnu and sita is none other than lakshmi he says rama says atmanam manusham manye ramam dasharathatmajam i deem myself to be rama who is the son of dasharatha a human being but it's not so even rama ravana parshyami realized rama as being the incarnation of narayana he says after kumbhakarna is killed ravana exclaims yasya vikramamasaadya rakshasa nikhana nidhanangataha tammanye raghavam veeram narayana manamayam who is this rama who coming to whom coming to whose veiler becoming the aim of becoming the victims of whose veiler so many demons have been killed i think this rama is none other than narayana lord narayana himself that's what ravana partially realizes the that is how ravana partially realizes the greatness of rama and then mandodari that is the wife of ravana having worship, having had the darshan or having seen <laughs> to put it in the proper way having seen rama after ravana is killed says tamasah paramo dhata shankha chakra gadadhara shri vatsavaksha nitya shrihi adayya shashvato dhruvah who is this rama he is beyond the tamas or darkness and he is lord narayana who is having shankha chakra gadai having the shivat savaksha has the divine <coughs> shivat sign his on his heart ajayya shashvata who cannot be defeated by anybody so <coughs> even valmiki in no uncertain terms mentions about the lord vishnu as narayana and him as the supreme 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 person there are several other instances also but these are a few instances where valmiki uses the word narayana itself which is very very <coughs> beautiful and enjoyable <coughs> so it is shlagit pala vidangalilum mitta shlagit kondaduhayale so in several places they have mentioned about the greatness of the narayana word narayana and also the ashtakshana mahamantra so they have all the rishis have greatly accepted and enjoyed and they themselves have attained fulfillment by using the word narayana and also the ashtakshana mahamantra so now we have seen how the rishis or sages have acclaimed the mantra then manavada mamuni swami manavada mamuni gives a huge list of how all the aadvars have beautifully acclaimed and worshipfully mentioned the word narayana so we have the concept of tatsama and tadbhava that is slight variation of the word so narayana becomes narana in tamil you have the word narayana also and narana also which are both the same and in the malvars thiruvaimuri several times the word we have come across van puhal naranam tinkalal chere shalva naranam enna shulkel van puhal naranam is in the very second dashaka of the first sentence he says van puhal naranam then in the ninth 
ബസ്കായ് ശെൽവനാരണനും മെഷം കേൾക്കണം എന്റെ നിന്ദി പെനൽട്ടിമേറ്റ് ദശകായി വാൾ പുകൾ നാരണൻ തപരക്കണ്ടുഹന്റെ എന്നും പടിയാ ആദിമധ്യാവസാനമാഹ നമ്മാഴ്വാർ അറുളി ചെയ്യാനും സോ ഇൻ ദി ബിഗിനിങ് ഇൻ ദി മിഡിൽ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇൻ ദി ആൾ ദീസ് പ്ലേസസ് ഹിസ് യൂസ് യുവർ നാരായണ സോ നമ്മാഴ്വാർ ഹാസ് ഗ്രേറ്റ്ലി അക്ലൈം ദി വേൾഡ് നാരായണ ആൻഡ് ഇൻഡയറക്ട്ലി ദി അഷ്ടാക്ഷര മഹാമന്ത്ര then then periyadva very beautifully he says namo divya prabandha, which is the first divya prabandha to be chanted in the nalayana divya prabandhas which says manavana mamma he says vedat om in prabandha just as we say hari om in the beginning of the vedas similarly before chanting any of the other prabandhas we have to ാരായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായണായ
the towing so when the towing would not it could not be removed easily the lord said why don't you actually remove it with your teeth then immediately kaliyan ar tirumangi alvar who was not known as tirumangi alvar until then he immediately bent down and so if the towing has to be removed with the uh, teeth his head has to touch the feet of the lord so as soon as the his feet touched the, his head touched the feet of the lord he immediately had the <coughs> realization of the supreme lord and he said beautiful word in name word in varan din name manattal perumbe perantu irambil perambe very beautiful 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 first ten stanzas where he says i have undergone so much of misery but now maadinen maadinam kande konde narayana innunnamam after seeking for several 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 years now i have realized that your name is dark nara your name is narayana naan kande konde now i have realized that you are none other than narayana and your name is narayana very very beautiful Uh, occasion and as i mentioned in mail kote twice a year this episode is enacted even today where the tirumangi alvar is he comes from behind and the lord is actually proceeding on the horse and he symbolically it is shown as he removes all the ornaments and then when he is about to remove the touring of the lord he attains realization he attains the vision of the supreme lord of course it is done in several even in tirumangamannan vedpuri is very famous in tiruvalitta marriages beautiful uh, episode even in shirangam it is enacted it is enacted away in several divyadeshams and then immediately afterwards the ten ashrams the first ten that is vadi name vadi is chanted by all the people in Uh, unison <clears throat> very very beautiful it actually a person <laughs> he he may cry he may actually feel uh, elated or anything can happen to him when he realizes the beauty and the greatness and also the veneratedness of the incident and then finally in the periya tirumadal which is his final uh, divya prabandha he says he actually uh, imitates or he repeats what gajendra told as the words of gajendra when he performed sharanagati to silas he says narayana omani vannana hanayai varai maridarikai o lord narayana mani vanna who resembles whose part whose the divine divya mangala vigraha as we call it whose divine form resembles that of the mani vara in aridareni come and protect me so the word narayana is used that thus in the beginning and also in the end he says narayana narayana indre trimange aalvarum upakramattodu उपसंहारोड़ मुदारायणीफुलेर 
all the first three aardvars, namely the Oihe aardvar, Purat aardvar, and Pei aardvar. In their first three Thiruvandaris, I think you know the story of them, how the beautiful, beautiful story. <laughs> I will not go out to repeat it. So they have, in several, several places of their Divya Prabhantas, mentioned the <coughs> name Aardvar and propitiated the Lord. And finally, Marar Mayar Varamadinanam Maruninan Engirapadiye Nirahetika Bhagavat Katakshatale Samadhikata Samastavastu Vastavarana Aardvar Hedallam Virumbinar Hed. Thus, by means of the causeless divine grace of the Supreme Lord, they could understand the tattva of all the entities in this world. That is the Aardvars. So all the Aardvars have, irrespective of their age, their time, and <coughs> other considerations have <coughs> beautifully mentioned the name, not to mention of Aardvars, who says, Nara, Yanani, Namakke, Paretharuva, etc. Beautiful, once again. So, that itself can form a thesis. Probably where all the word Narayana has come in, all the Divya Prabhantas. Somebody might have already done research. If not, it's a worthwhile topic to take, take up. <coughs> so, thus we have seen Tai Vedangalam, Rishihadam. Aryvar Hidam, Acharya Hidam, Virambinar Hidam. So, Itara Mantrangada Yanadarit, Itaye Tantamak, Tanjamaha Nusandhit, Upadesha Veda Idam. So, they have not given the prominence given to this mantra to any other mantra. And not only they have instructed the others, they have themselves used it as the only mantra that will protect them protect themselves. So they have preached what they practiced, they have practiced what they preached. Therefore, Tanta mai patti navara halakkum ittaye ujjivana he tovaha upade shikka poru hayale. So not only they have mentioned themselves, those who are their own followers, for them also they have without any hesitation and with all good intentions, with the welfare of their own disciples in mind, they have instructed this mantra only to their disciples, all the Aardvars. Therefore, we are all the disciples of the Aardvars only, especially in Ammarva. Because it was Namadwar who bestowed all the Divya Prabhantas to Nathamuni as per the tradition, as per the history of Sri Vaishnavism, which I am not going to elaborate now, because I think most of you know about it. Therefore, Arvar, Hadakni, Pinchandra, Acharya, Hadakni, all the Acharyas, right from the Nathamuni, etc., all the Acharyas who followed the Aardvars, they also very beautifully <coughs> and very sincerely accepted this and they also adapted them, adapted this mantra in their lives. Ittal mantra antarangal kaattilli mantrat kundana vaibhavam shunnitta iti So by all these, what we have just seen, <coughs> the greatness of this mantra, the uniqueness of this mantra over all the other mantras has been explained well. That is how Manavada Mamani, Swami Manavada Mamani concludes the commentary on this Chodnika. So the, this completes the 13th Chodnika. The 14th Chodnika is Vacha Prabhavam Polan Vachaka Prabhavam It's a new topic which will <clears throat> continue to discuss and understand in the next session. Thank you very much. Feedback, questions, discussions, we can have briefly. Swami, uh, 
we have heard uh, we've heard from some other people that there are there are other sections of uh, Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam where uh, they are not uh, actually giving a Stakshara mantra the way it is given in the, in the in the Upanishads, uh, but they 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 suggest for different sections of society other mantras like uh, like Namo Narayana or even just Narayana or Am Namo Narayana. Can you comment? Yeah, that is regarding the Tenmatari Sampradaya, we give it along with the, it is given along with the Pranava that is home. Whereas it is not given in uh, as Om but Am. This I think we have discussed in the earlier classes because for certain people, the Pranavas, uh, giving, uh, giving the Upadesha of the Pranava is not advised as per the Vedic uh, norms. Therefore, it is uh, given as Am Namo Narayana. See, if you give only Namo Narayana, it doesn't become Ashtakshara, it will become Saptakshara, which, will, uh, which, will, which is a great uh, drawback. Because the uh, number 8 is also very, very, very important. So 8 is a very important number as far as the spiritual aspects of human beings are concerned. That is another, once again, a huge uh, science. It's called uh, the science of numerology. Of course, nowadays people misuse it and misquote it and all those things. But numbers have a very, very significant role to play because that is why even uh, the Ashtakshara, we call it as we number it. Even the Gayatri, we number it. And even the Ashtakshara, while chanting, we have numbers. Do it eight times, ten times, eighteen, twenty-four, forty-eight, one hundred eight, one thousand eight, etc. So, only Namo Narayanaya is not advisable. So, it is Am Namo Narayanaya or Om Namo Narayanaya, but Am Namo Narayanaya is even for uh, uh, the Shudras as well as the ladies in the Padakalai Sampradaya. That I have already explained, we have, I think we have discussed about it earlier. But if you want uh, to discuss once again, we can do that briefly. So, okay. So sometimes we, some of the some of the quotes that you've given have extolled the the greatness of the of the of the name Narayana. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So the name Narayana is is great. The Astakshara is also great. So, yes. it, it, but they're equally great, or or the or the Astakshara is greater course, than the name Narayana. When the Nara, the name Narayana itself is great. The Astakshara becomes uh, greater in the sense it. It encapsulates the word Narayana also, uh, along with some other more aspects. Therefore, it is it is more greater. You can say greater, but uh, that doesn't mean that the word Narayana is less than the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. So you have to understand it in a particular context. Right. Okay. So, but Narayana is four syllables, and uh, and uh, Namo Namo Narayana is six syllables and the Monarayanaya is seven syllables, but Amna Monarayanaya or Omna Monarayanaya is the full eight syllables. Yes. There's some yeah. advantage for eight syllables. Yes, yes. Okay. And you were, you were speaking about the fact that uh, when, we, when somebody says, have you seen God, people forget that they have seen God or they, or they don't realize when they go to the temple that they actually see God in the Ashavataram. So is the efficacy of chanting a Stakshara or the name Narayana uh, dependent upon our realization of the Lord? No, you, you get the realization of the Lord by constant chanting. That is the beauty of it. That is the way that, that is the means to get the realization of the Lord. So the, man, the mantra itself is powerful, doesn't depend upon our realization. The power of the mantra. No, to get the realization, you have to chant the mantra. <laughs> that is how it is. Because after realization, you may do it. That is not uh, prohibited, uh, of course. But the main uh, intention itself is to realize. Right. But, do, but in order to chant the mantra properly, we have to have the mantra. Arta. We have to know what the, 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 the meaning yeah, of the mantra is. You know, you know in, a, in an abstract manner, you know it. But you have not realized but. Because if you have already realized, then why, have you, why, why do you chant again? Of course, you may do it as Bhagavad Pritya later. 
but as of now it is the means <coughs> it is the means to attain the realization right so then you were you were mentioning about tirupalanda and i believe that tirupalanda tirupalanda is considered a separate uh, prabanda by Ten, tenacharya sampradayam but is considered part of uh, another prabanda by uh, deshika sampradaya no 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 i don't think so. Tirupalanda no? is separate prabanda periyarwar tirumudi is separate prabanda in that thing i don't you know, with regard to that i don't think there is any difference of opinion i see okay somebody is somebody is asking okay, is there so but just back to this idea of uh, amnamonarayana and omnamonarayana uh, there there are certainly going to be some pramanas in dharma shastras that uh, ladies and sudras should not chant uh, pranava but uh, is there any what is the pramana therefore for tenacharya sampradaya that uh, you can give that <laughs> there, are, there, is a, there, are, there are several uh, uh, works that are uh, that uh, that are uh, dealing with the what uh, controversy <laughs> which i think uh, <clears throat> it's not so relevant today because in those days people were really really chanting the mantra taking it seriously and all those things but nowadays even uh, for example now even i am i am actually realizing so much by sharing this i would not like to say i am teaching and you are being instructed it is the sharing of thoughts i would like to say like that so now even after i when i study i feel uh, i feel really impressed but after 5 or 10 minutes uh, i i get involved in worldly aspects so i would like to say how the ignorance takes over us or it has taken us over actually even though we we see see all these people have mentioned hardwar sir mentioned acharya sir mentioned sage sir mentioned but we have the single minded devotion towards ashtakshara and give up everything else we are so much enamored about the material world about our families wife children etc we means generally i am telling including me for that matter so we have not realized it we we have partially partially very partially understood the greatness based on the works suppose i will i will give an example suppose a person is there who is very much after money and as a person offers him i he will say i will give you 1 million dollars per month if you do all the works that i say in a reasonable reasonable manner what will he do he will give up everything and he will take up the job that gives him 1 million dollars per month so we should actually my acharya used to say that so having studied now i have explained this based on the work of manohar mamu but do i really realize and do i give up everything and uh, uh, do uh, the ashtakshara mahamantra only so that is why it called as dridha adhyavasaya in sampradaya do i have that dridha adhyavasaya that even if i now don't do anything else and i concentrate totally on ashtakshara mahamantra my my daily needs my worldly needs and my other worldly needs will be taken care of it's not so easy <laughs> do you agree or not yeah sure of course um so now i have explained this theory and this practice this theory and practice yes. so have i i may after reading this if i am doing it 10 times a day i may do it 100 times or if i am doing i may do 500 times but have i given up everything have i given up uh, my enamored my, my being enamored of the world about the gadgets about my family about money and all the worldly things no so that means it has not created that type of an effect on me still which is the result of my past deeds past karmas etc so gradually by increasing 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 the japa gradually the worldly things have to go it's not a, as many other uh, people generally my acharya says i will not say because i am not uh, competent to say that my acharya says many a times in discourses they say oh you tell me the world narayana immediately you go to moksha of course the greatness of the narayana mahamantra is so it is so so great that 
immediately it can deliver but what are who are you have you been able to realize that and then do then definitely it will happen but it's not easy it's not as easy as it is mentioned by people generally people when they give discourses that doesn't mean we actually personally say this person is wrong and or that person is wrong it's not so simple and i will say that with regard to me so if you ask me tomorrow or next week if you ask me uh, uh, alwar you have tell, told uh, so much about you have uh, explained the greatness of the word narayana and dashtakira mahamantra have you realized that it can give you everything and have you given up your own efforts in with regard to worldly things if i am if i tell the truth i have to tell no so that is what it is so somebody somebody is asking in the chat that uh, they want to know is it possible for you to show the correct procedure for chanting of astakshara because uh, we we read in books there might be some uh, some we have to be we have to be in a certain situation and we have to perform certain yasas and dhyanas and and everything and to do it correctly that is that is uh, with anang with anganyasa and karanyasa it is to be performed then my guru used to say it will increase the efficacy so that uh, that we will discuss some other time right so you so but you're perfectly prepared to explain all the japangas and all these things i can i can tell what little i know that much definitely i can share there is no problem. very good and then uh, once somebody again, see once again once again this is not a matter of just telling for my own year to five years in the brahma sutra it says a prayana tatra api drishtam until the person gives up this body he has to constantly do it so if it is if the person has not had realization he has to do it for realization if the person already has realization then to consummate that realization he has to do it. so that is why even madhvacharya very beautifully says santatam chintaye anantam antakale visheshata so automatically if if you are in the spiritual path especially in the vaishnava path automatically you will do it so it's like it's like a catch 22 situation if you are interested in the spiritual path you will do it if you are in a, if you do it you will become interested in the spiritual path of and the vaishnava path so though it's like a catch 22 it's like that only you cannot help it so my i used to ask my acharya so unless a person chants the mantra he will not get uh, realization unless he gets realization he will not chant then not no it's not like that it is a catch 22 situation only but gradually based on the upadesha of our purva acharya or onson acharya you do now if i am doing 10 times you do 50 times if you are doing 50 you do 100 if you do 100 you do 500 gradually you increase and gradually realization starts coming to you so also somebody privately in the chat they were asking me uh the difference in the mantra for sh- for shudras and ladies um but i think you already covered that you were you were discussing so about my, my 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 suggestion in this regard is you go by your acharya don't worry about the right uh, what the, the differences of opinion so there might be some uh, there's a, a lot of value to shishtachara also that yes. uh, in your family and your see, acharya see both see om namo narayana om namo narayana both have their own valid reasons <clears throat> so there is no no need to quarrel because from this point of from a particular one point of view this has been mentioned from another point of view that has been mentioned both are valid in different contexts so we it is today see ultimately what matters is how many times you do the japa or how many times you do the chant there is a you may you may understand the views of both the schools but that doesn't make any difference as far as you are chanting this kind of how are your your acharya has taught you you do that that is how the you have to practically adopt it there is nothing wrong in knowing the uh, 
um, underlying uh, causes between the two schools, why there was, why there are differences of opinion. But there is no use uh, glorifying the difference of opinion because a person really interested in the in uh, engaging in the Vaishnava path will not be worried about those differences. He wants his uh, aim is more important rather than entering into these uh, uh, controversies. Differences of opinion or quarrels about it. Quarrel is a very bad word. I would not like to do that. Let, let's say small differences of opinion. Yes, 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 yes. So these are all, these are only just small details, and uh, we should look at the broader picture. And yes, see what the see, main thing. The main by, thing is by to, uh, entering into these uh, quarrels. What do we achieve? Is there anything that you achieve? No. Earlier people used to do it for way for the sake of uh, gratifying their ego or uh, actually condemning some other person due to other uh, things. But that thing is the against the very definition of a Shivaishnu. So definitely even Manavad Bhavani or Vedan Deshka, they have not engaged in these things. Later so, people have they have mentioned this opinion and said this there is another opinion also, but this opinion seems to be more balanced. But nobody, no Acharya has very specifically uh, refuted other Acharyas in the Shiva philosophy. That has been the trend only in the last 100, 200 years. Swami, uh, I, I'm so much used to saying Om, Om, Om. And after these classes, it, I came to know that I have to say Um. So my question is, without my knowledge, I keep saying Om, Om, Om. Is it a sin or am I going? No, no, it's not a sin. Definitely, you can say that. Yes. There is nothing wrong in saying that. Okay. okay. So, thank you. Mangala Shasana Parayir Madhacharya Purokamaihi Sarvaishya Purvairachari Satkritaya Stumangalam